As the Bulls defend their NBA titles and hope for a three-peat, there are many unanswered questions regarding next year's roster. The list of possible free agents includes some household names and runs eight shallow. That uncertainty combined with salary cap maneuvering to bring in European star Tony Kukoc has fueled much speculation in Chicago. We like Scott Williams. We, we're going to sign Scott Williams. We're going to sign Will Purdue. We like Will Purdue. And I think he's going to be you know, a solid player in this league. When you take Michael, who's 30, and you take uh, Scotty, who's tw going to be 27, I think, next season. Horace will be 27 next season. Uh, BJ will be 25 next season. Uh, Stacy will be 26 next season. That's the core of a very good young team. Cartwright's future rests heavily on a three-peat. If they win, he'll probably be back. That decision will impact the status of several others. The whole thing, you know, the, how many big men we have kind of goes in order of Bill. You know, Scott, Stacy, myself, it kind of, you know, works its way down. What's Bill going to do? That will affect what, you know, what Jerry does with myself and Scott Williams. Or, you know, Stacy stated that, you know, he wants to be traded. Are there teams out there that have interest? So it kind of, you know, what one of the four guys does kind of filters down and affects what happens to the other three. So what do you do after this year? You've got a number of free agents. Jerry Krause says he's going to re-sign Scott Williams. He's going to re-sign Will Purdue. B.J. Armstrong has an option. He'll be back, he says. What more can be done? You've only got one slot, maybe two. Well, we have to get more power in our game. Uh, we obviously are, are at a point in our history where speed has taken us as far as it can. And now we have to get a little more power in our game and we have to have a better sized team. And I think that that's going to be our direction as we go down through the years. Now, Kokic is a big kid. We don't know if we'll sign him, but in all probability, if he does come, he's 6'10". But he's not going to be a rebounder and he's not an answer to our power. We'll, f we'll have to find a power player that's going to go uh, with the team that we have right now. The bottom line is that a salary slot must be created for Europe's best player, Tony Kukoc. While he won't be the answer to the Bulls' power outage, he has been coveted by Jerry Krause for three years. Kukoc was spotted in Minneapolis last week after being flown in by Krause for a physical, a move that sparked questions and irritated players. The only thing that kind of irks the guys a little bit is is how it's, it's done so much, uh, you know, behind the scenes, you know, the, the Jerry Krause undercover stuff. If, I don't know what the big deal is if you just bring it out front. I mean, everybody knows he wants to try to sign the guy, and that's, you know, a year ago, two years ago, it was a big issue, and it, it really, uh, you know, miffed a lot of guys, but now it's kind of become a, a regularity of about a once-a-month once a month show. It, it kind of resurfaces, but I think we've kind of gotten used to it. Former Bull Cliff Livingston, playing in Greece this year, has learned firsthand what Krause has been so excited about when Pauk lost to Kukoc's Benetton team in April. Ironically, Kukoc may be plugged into Livingston's salary slot, filled this season by Rodney McRae. Me getting caught up in the numbers game with him, it's easy to get in that little, well, I hate him and dislike him. You know, I didn't really dislike him, but I really didn't like him as a player. I respect him as a player now. He can pass, he can shoot, he can run, he can dunk, do everything necessary for him for a good player to to be in a league and he deserves to be in the NBA. No question he belongs in the NBA but if it's to be with the Bulls as appears almost certain they got a maneuver to make room under the salary cap so who goes? They've got some very tough decisions to make. Bill Cartwright told me he wants to stay if they three-peat and the Bulls might decide that they can't afford that luxury. They have to they have to use his slot to get that power forward that Phil Jackson says they need. I say the guy they should go after is AC Green but the most important thing they have to do, Bob, is to re-sign Horace Grant, who will be an unrestricted free agent after next year. If they don't satisfy him before next year starts, this guy is liable to take a walk. Kukoc's best positions are two and three. There is no way he's going to dislodge Jordan and Pippen from those positions. I think this overemphasis on Kukoc is out of place. What the Chicago Bulls need is front court help. I'd go in the free agent market for guys like the Chief, Robert Parrish, and also Tom Chambers. Plus, the Bulls have to look at replacing John Paxson very quickly. His career is right at the end. In but I, I don't think there's any interest to dislodge either Jordan or Pippen. I think it's to support him for the most part, and I think he's willing, a uh, coach is willing to do that. But I think what's really interesting about the Bulls is, as you watch Detroit win championships and then had to take the dive to try to get back up, 
the Bulls are positioning themselves to, you know, possibly win a championship and stay at the same, uh, the similar level. Level that is not normally done in this league. So I think that's great management on their part. And let's face it, the Bulls are not going to get rid of Bill Cartwright to put Ch Tom Chambers into his salary <laughs> slot. Let's move on. <laughs>